The concept of employing artificial gravity to create gravity within a spaceship is fascinating. Many people believe it would be an excellent method to keep astronauts healthy on lengthy voyages by avoiding bone and muscle loss over the 18 months or more it would take to fly to and from Mars in weightlessness. Without further ado, join us as we tell you how SpaceX's artificial gravity starship concept works. But before that, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell button to be notified whenever we publish a new video. Despite the numerous difficulties we face today, it is still an exciting moment to be alive. For the first time in almost 50 years, mission planners and engineers are working on plans to transport people beyond low Earth orbit LEO. We're not only returning to the Moon, but we're also looking to Mars and other far-flung parts of the solar system. This poses several difficulties, not the least of which are the effects of extended radiation exposure and microgravity. And, while there are numerous feasible alternatives for radiation protection for personnel, gravity remains a stumbling obstacle. People will be transported to Mars by SpaceX's spaceship, which will travel through space with no gravity. The force that permits you to go from your house to the shop without drifting away into space is gravity. While gravity maintains everything in place, it's easy to forget about it. However, because there is no gravity in space, Astronauts are a distinct species because their actual work environment is gravity-free. When they are in space, they experience zero gravity, which gives them weightless sensation. This explains the floating astronaut films that the majority of you have seen. The Starship is at the heart of Elon Musk's ambitions for humanity to become a multi-planetary species. Because prolonged zero gravity harms them, SpaceX must discover a technique to create gravity in space artificially. They lose strength as a result of not being utilized as frequently. Even a consistent workout may not be enough to overcome the muscular consequences. Using centrifugal force to create fake gravity is the most realistic method. When you spin something, you'll observe that the object travels away from the spin center. The more you do it, the better. Consider the starship being spun indefinitely. Individuals trapped inside will be forced away from the starship's core towards the wall. The centrifugal force will continually act on them, gradually substituting gravity. However, considerable consideration must ensure that the force imposed on the passengers does not surpass the force exerted by gravity ELLs. They won't be the first firm to contemplate this, given gravity is the most often used application method. SpaceX might use the linear acceleration approach to produce gravity when considering circumstances where humans spend extended periods in space. This entails continuously accelerating in a straight line using the Starship's Raptor engines. Anything inside the Starship will be dragged in the opposite direction as the acceleration, producing the appearance of. The difficulty is that the engines must operate continuously and accelerate even when switched off. Otherwise, weightlessness would be slowed. Currently, the only viable engines that might propel a vessel fast enough to reach speeds similar to Earth's gravitational pull are chemical reaction rockets, which release reaction mass to produce thrust. Therefore, the acceleration would only last as long as the vessel. Before SpaceX, people attempted to create gravity intentionally. A Russian rocket enthusiast called Konstantin Tsiolkovsky suggested the notion for the first time more than a century ago. The idea dates back over a century with Tsiolkovsky, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics, providing the earliest recorded demonstration. He proposed utilizing rotating force to generate artificial gravity in space in research titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices in 1903. Many variants of this design, including the Von Braun wheel, the O'Neill cylinder, and the Stanford Taurus have been proposed for space stations and habitats since then. Some proposals, such as NASA's Nautilus X space station and the Gateway Foundation's plan for a commercial space station, are even being evaluated for development. Small Stars came up with the concept for the Gravity Link Starship, or GLS, after doing some study on centripetal force. The GLS is essentially a hub ship with a truss in the cargo bay that unfolds and deploys robotically, thereby acting as the wheel spokes. It would be positioned between two passenger starships, with which it would communicate for the duration of the six-month voyage to Mars. 
the passenger ships would spin around to realign themselves and use their thrusters to provide momentum to the wheel once they were connected. The passenger ships would reposition themselves to face inward towards the hub ship after enough velocity was created to approximate Earth normal gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, or 1 g. The centripetal force generated by the wheels spinning would cause passengers on board the passenger ships to feel as though they were being dragged down throughout the rest of the journey. The GLS is essentially a hub ship, similar to a wheels hub. Instead of passengers and cargo, the GLS payload bay is crammed with a truss that can robotically fold out and lock into position, acting as spokes for the wheel. Thanks mainly to studies done by astronauts on board the International Space Station, we now know a lot about the long-term impacts of microgravity exposure ISS, muscle loss, bone density loss, organ dysfunction, vision loss, changes in cardiovascular strength, and even genetic alterations are among them. But it wasn't until 1924 when another rocket expert from Slovenia, this time from Slovenia, demonstrated the spinning technique in his book on space problems. NASA first considered building a rotating space station in the 1950s, but it has never done so, and the reasons aren't far-fetched. For one thing, artificial gravity isn't necessary for any of NASA's missions. Therefore, it didn't make sense to invest money in it. The Moon, for example, is the only other location visited by humanity and has its gravity. NASA believes the ISS to be beneficial as a zero-gravity environment. Many previous and present experiments have taken place in the station's microgravity setting. We know SpaceX would have to work in zero gravity. Fans of the corporation and other space lovers have stepped in with anti-zero gravity proposals, so we can't say if the development of artificial gravity is proceeding in tandem or postponed. Some of them are rather intriguing. For example, SpaceX's vision has created a fantastic representation of spinning the Starship to produce artificial gravity. According to their vision, the Starship splits in half and deploys elongated arms with two cabins. When these arms begin rotating around the Starship, they will generate the necessary centrifugal force within the cams to mimic gravity. This may be a fantastic method to give the Starship artificial gravity zones. Once in orbit, the artificial gravity may be increased simply by raising the rotational speed of the arms. That isn't to suggest that creating artificial gravity is simple. There are several factors to consider, some significant and others little. The centrifugal force, for example, is not pulled. Centrifugal force, like gravity, pushes you out from the center of the universe. Gravity, on the other hand, pushes you towards the Earth's core. Also, the degree of centrifugal force you felt during the spin depended on your distance from the spin center. In practical words, given the star ship's modest dimensions compared to the Earth, the force felt on the head would be different from the force felt on the leg. At the very least, it would make the movement or bodily displacement inside the uncomfortable. The elephant in the room, which SpaceX will have to solve someday, is maintaining the starship rotating at all times. Suppose the centrifugal option is chosen, and you must spin the starship. In that case, you must account for the enormous amount of energy necessary to do so with propellant in extremely short supply. The design engineers will undoubtedly be concerned. The overall weight of a starship will vary dramatically. It depends on whether it is being used as a freight transporter or a people carrier and as any anticipated space spinning. What do you think about how SpaceX's artificial gravity concept works? Do you believe that the wonders of these innovations will take space explorations to a whole new level? Also, what are your reactions to this video? Feel free to drop your thoughts and responses in the comments section below. And before leaving, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications on our future content. See you in the next video.